Hi, this is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville, speaking about the Mother of Jesus. We're talking specifically about her title in this segment as the Advocate for the People of God. And previously we discussed the Old Testament background that the Queen Mother of the Davidic King had two critical roles. The first was the role of intercession. And secondly, was the role of what was called dynastic succession, the choosing of the uh, successor if her kingly son died. And notice in both of these cases, the queen gets her dignity and power in relation to the king. We're not talking about female kings here. We're talking about queens who are mothers to the king. And in fact, in the Old Testament, it was a very providential uh, arrangement since, for example, Solomon had 700 wives. It would be rather difficult to select one of those 700 to be the queen as opposed to making your mother the queen. So as we enter the New Testament, we see that as soon as Mary once again says that glorious fiat, let it be done to me, she becomes the queen mother of the king of kings, the fulfillment of the line of David and the ultimate king of the universe, Jesus Christ. So when she becomes mother of the king, she naturally and supernaturally becomes the queen mother. The old Jewish expression was the Gabira, the great lady. And so it's interesting that In her first journey out of Nazareth, she goes to Elizabeth. And at the visitation, she has that profound encounter with Elizabeth. But what does Elizabeth say to Mary? Elizabeth says, Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Well, that expression, mother of my Lord, is a royal Davidic Gabira title from the Old Testament. They called the Queen Mother, the Mother of my Lord. So Elizabeth, under the power of the Holy Spirit, is fulfilling all types of prophecies. When she says, greets Mary, when she says, who am I that the Mother of my Lord should come to me? She could be saying, who am I that the Kabira would come to my house? And this is all of the Holy Spirit, because Elizabeth did not know the bearings of who was in the womb of the Mother, that the that Mary was coming as the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Ark of the Covenant, uh, bearing Jesus, who's the fulfillment of the manna, the fulfillment of the rod of Jesse, the fulfillment of the commandments. That was what was contained in the Ark of the Covenant. Mary's the new Ark of the Eternal Covenant. She visits Elizabeth, and Elizabeth acknowledges her as the Gabira, as the Great Lady, as the Queen Mother. And we see also that Mary acts as the Gabira, as the Queen Mother, as the Advocate at Cana, because immediately she's interceding at Cana for people who are not disciples of Jesus. Authentic patristic medieval scripture scholarship tells us that the wedding couple were not followers of Jesus. In fact, uh, as John Paul II alludes to in one of his encyclicals, Mother of the Redeemer, It's as if Jesus is invited because Mary was invited. So Mary even mediates the presence of Jesus at the wedding. Then Mary acts as the queen mother. She's the one who notices the wine is running out. That could be embarrassing uh, and significantly embarrassing based on the rich symbolism of wine for the people of Israel. She intercedes for someone outside of the kingdom, so to speak which shows that Mary's mediation, Mary's intercession as advocate is universal. She's not just an advocate for Christians. She's an advocate for each and every human person. Why? Because Jesus died for each and every human person. And Jesus wishes salvation for each and every human person. So Mary is the advocate. She's the queen mother for each and every person, even those outside of the kingdom, trying to get them into the kingdom for the purpose of salvation. And then this, of course, continues in Revelations 12, because in Revelations 12, we have two profound scriptures. One is what leads into that great image of the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and uh, on her uh, crown, 12 stars. What happens right before Revelations 12, 1, is Revelations eleven nineteen, 19, which is what? It's a vision of the ark. Amazing for the Jewish people. They haven't seen the ark for at least four centuries. 
Jeremiah prophesied they, they'd have a difficulty, a trial in the covenant, and they'd, they'd lose, lose the ark, which was the symbol of the covenant. For, for Catholics, it'd, like, it'd be by losing the tabernacle, for goodness sake. So they, they lose the ark, they don't see it for four centuries, and then what happens? John sees it in heaven. Revelations 11.19, the ark of the covenant. Revelations 12.1, the next instant of Revelations, the woman clothed with the sun. What's, what's the Holy Spirit telling us? That the new ark is Mary. Mary is the queen mother. Mary is crowned with 12 stars. Why? Because she's the new queen mother and advocate for the people of God. That's why throughout the history of the church, people have gone to Mary with such a confidence, especially during times of difficulty, because this is a scriptural, patristic, medieval, supernaturally revealed truth. When things are difficult, Mary will be our advocate like no other creature before the throne of Jesus. And remember, since this is all by God's ordination, by God's providence, it pleases God when we go to Mary as our advocate. The early Christians do it, uh, did it in, in great uh, detail, and there's even images of Mary as an intercessor in the, in the uh, catacombs. And, and so the early church did it. We're called to do it right now. I think in light of present degeneration of family life, disaster, war, terrorism, abortion, pornography, family breakdown and so many fronts. We need an advocate today. Jesus gave us his mother to be our advocate. Let's intercede to Mary. Let's ask for intercession with confidence. She is our advocate. God bless you. Mm -hmm.